I was looking at this video made by Silver Soul a few days ago, maybe it was just yesterday anyway, recently, called Success Objects, which is a brilliant term actually, I think. I don't know if it's an original to you, Silver Soul, but it is well done on that one. I'll definitely nick it. But what he's talking about there is, uh, he's, he's, he's borrowing from the term sex object, which is uh, that term that's applied to how women might regard themselves as being treated, that rather than being given the status of uh, kind of fully rounded human subjects with needs and desires and intentions and agency and power in the world, all those kind of things. There's a, a set of, uh, 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 there's a bit of rhetoric about the idea that women are treated as objects, purely uh, kind of reduced to the status of, uh, of a sex toy, if you like. And that's, that's a well-established piece of discourse, that one. But what Silverstall's doing is he's, been, he's producing this term success object, which is that men are similarly objectified, perhaps by one another, perhaps by women, perhaps by some nebulous society at large, uh, but not reduced to their uh, sexual organs, which you know, the, the, the common uh, kind of rhetoric has that women are, but reduced to their uh, success level, to their economic status, to their esteem ratings, whatever that might be, to their uh, ability to thrive in the world in a certain uh, in a certain way, which, which is about power, I suppose, and about economic economic power or physical power, those kind of things. And there certainly seems to be a lot of evidence of that in the world. You know, I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a cliche that's so bedded down in truth that it's unavoidable. You know, and the newspapers are full of young, attractive, pneumatically enhanced females in the company of old, rich, powerful men. Uh, and that power is usually economic power, but it might be the power of violence, it might be the power of, uh, uh, of you know, of access to government, it might be, you know, any kind of, any kinds of, it might just be celebrity power, the power of commanding attention. But uh, there certainly does seem to be about that, so success and sex are kind of endlessly paraded hand in hand, uh, and both perhaps as, as different kinds of objects. So I'm just thinking about this success. I don't know what the, I don't know what the how to feel about that. I mean, maybe it's all right, maybe it's not. Uh, and just as a bit of support for that, I'm sure Silver Soul's completely aware of this. Is the, you know, the uh, there's a lot of literature in uh, evo psychology, evolutionary psychology, particularly the kind of pop versions of it, which certain, which paint that picture. That uh, it gives kind of evolutionary. Uh, accounts of where that might come from to do with differentials in uh, uh, in how the reproductive systems work, in, in who's responsible for nurturing as opposed to who's responsible for doing the hunting gathering thing. Uh, so there's, there's often that kind of uh, just so story to support it. I don't know whether it's true or not, but to the extent that the evidence points in that direction it seems to be fair enough. And as I say, I don't know how to feel about that politically. You know, certainly I do feel the pressure's on as a bloke to uh, to be successful, which is different. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not, you can't be frail as a bloke. Uh, you can't be, uh, you know, loser, really. The words like loser or failure are really kind of male terms. You know, you, you, they only really bite, I think, if they're applied to men. They don't really work when applied to women in anything like the same way. Uh, and, it's, and they're very much attached to emasculation, so I think I think there's some truth in that. Where am I going with this? Oh, I suppose, I, yeah, I suppose where I'm thinking about it is in, in relation to confidence. Because, you know, if you were to take this on, you know what I mean? In the way that some women have taken on the role of sex objects and using it as a, as a, as a notional sense of empowerment, and I'm not sure if I go along with that, but some people do, you know, second wave, or is it third wave? Anyway, second wave, whatever it is, feminism. Kind of takes it on as a as a as a possibility. So you get women who claim to be feminists flaunting their sexuality because it's a it's a sort of empowerment. So that object becomes an offensive object or aggressive object. So um, you know, so men some, sometimes I think use the success object idea as a means of getting what they want, which is usually you know usually involves getting inside somebody's pants. To be honest with you, but. Uh, but that seems to be what a lot of it's about. 
and that is to do with confidence and it's to do with the betraying or, or, or demonstrating the signs of success. Uh, I suppose what I'm thinking of here is something like Neil Strauss's book The Game and all those books that came out a few years ago about uh, kind of gamesmanship, about how you know how to seduce women. That was very popular. There's a, there's a uh, what's it called, a Tom Cruise film. Uh, brilliant film, Magnolia, in which he plays a kind of a guy who's kind of instructing other men into how to play that game, how to seduce women into bed. Uh, and a lot of that is about confidence. Not, not as some weird emotional state, not as some trick that you do with your brain, but as a series of things that you do with your body. And it's about demonstrating the outward signs of success. Holding your body in a certain way, doing the things that you need to do in order to convey, usually at an unconscious level, that you are worthy of those of that esteem, that you have seen success, and and effectively turn yourself into a success object artificially, so that you become attractive to the opposite sex or whatever reason. Uh, yeah, I mean the one that sticks in my mind. I, don't, I can't remember which book it was. In. It was one of those how to seduce women books. And it was called something like the three S rule, or maybe it was the five S rule. And the S standing for seconds. Now what it says was, if you're in a bar or something like this, or a nightclub, and you catch a woman's eye across the other side of the room, you've got three seconds to get across there and say hello. If you delay any longer than three seconds, the, uh, the woman will think, consciously or unconsciously, that you don't know what you're doing. Because you haven't made the move, you haven't acted on impulse, as the advert goes. You haven't acted with confidence. You don't... You'd, there's been a moment of doubt, there's been time for doubt to enter your mind, she would con unconsciously think, which betrays that you don't really know what you're doing. Whereas if you do know what you're doing and you understand that it's a mating game, within three seconds you're across the room talking to her. And, uh, you know, I wish someone had told me that when I was 15, in the Astoria ballroom in Rotenstall, with all the boys at one side of the room, looking across at the girls, dancing round their handbags in the middle. And no one making a move for hours and hours and hours. And all it took was the three second rule. You go across there, you talk to Janice, and before you know it, there you go. Anyway, that's just that really. I don't know how long this video has been, probably too long. Anyway, the best the best example of confidence I've seen on YouTube recently, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, because this is gonna name a YouTube user, was this really great video by Bark Lord recently in response to one of Varia Blasts. I can't honestly say I like the content. But I did like the, uh, the clarity with which it was delivered. And I think, I think Varia Blast had been saying something about how uh, he was having trouble uh, establishing intimate relationships with women, let's put it that way. And, uh, and Barclaw just gave this really loose, laid back response. Yeah, yeah, you just rub their feet and cook them a nice dinner, get them to suck your dick. Look at me, I'm a barbarian. <laughs> Fucking great. It was so funny. I mean, it was so, um, it was said with such confidence and such obviousness. But I think if I was a woman, you know, in this, and as riddled with doubt as we all are, and uncertain as we all are, and someone came along who would demonstrate that the, uh, the apparent certitude and the, uh, the confidence that, that seems to just suggest I know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? I know what the rules are, I know what morality is, I know uh, how these things are supposed to work, I know you know how to handle a woman, then uh, if, and if I was female I'd probably gone along with it, you know I'd probably be getting my me, me feet rubbed and sucking bark loads of dick by now. Just because of the sheer confidence of it, the sheer success, object nature of that presentation. Yeah.